Speaker. Simon O'Connor. Mr Speaker, I'm here to obviously take a call on the Public Works Prohibition of Compulsory Acquisition of Maori Land Amendment Bill. Uh, it'll be no surprise uh, to the House uh, that I oppose this bill. Uh, for a number of reasons which I'm very happy to elucidate. Um, first and foremost, it's really actually to acknowledge the words that my colleague Nook Karako uh, shared. I think quite an eloquence there in raising uh, the arguments, particularly around how this bill does the opposite of what it intends to do. It doesn't actually bring people together. It doesn't facilitate uh, healing. It actually encourages a, a separatist mindset, which is somewhat paradoxical coming from a Green Party, which talks about human rights and communitarian principles and so forth. I think my fundamental problem with this bill is it's an attempt to fight uh, injustices of the past by passing a bill that looks towards uh, the future. I doubt that there's anyone in this House uh, who looks back to how Māori land was acquired in the past. No one here would say that was a good thing, and people would acknowledge quite rightly, as would I, that the Public Works Act was used to facilitate that. That is the Public Works Act of the past. And in many ways, this bill is just trying to, I would argue, tokenistically fight the battles of the past in a way that is incredibly unhelpful. We have a process in place through the treaty settlements to address a number of the elements, a number of elements which have been raised here today, including from the previous speaker, from Calvin Davis. This, I remind from my side to the member who has put this forward, again, strikes me as rather tokenistic and again trying to fight the past and relitigate the past. We don't have this issue at the moment. We have a Public Works Act which applies to all land, regardless of one's ethnicity. If, if in, in theory, roads, say, were being built and gerrymandered, if you will, gerrymandered to only acquire Maori land, then maybe there'd be some credence in this discussion, but that is not the case. The Public Works Act in modern-day New Zealand is there for roads, uh, for schools. It is not done uh, willy-nilly. It is done very cautiously. In fact, I've got a situation in my own electorate at the moment where there's a suggestion that the Public Works Act may be used uh, to acquire a small piece um, of land. In fact, the Green Party might like it because it's for a cycleway, but it's actually raising some controversy, and there's a lot of uh, discussion. And funnily enough, the discussion doesn't need to be about who owns the land per se on the basis of ethnicity. It's about whether the land is needed for the good of the community. And I've been struck in speakers, particularly in support so far, have not mentioned the community. And that's the point of the Public Works Act in modern New Zealand, is to facilitate the needs of the community. Fundamentally, too, and what's been missed out, probably conveniently, uh, is that actually those um, who are, well, if the Public Works Act is invoked, uh, Mr Speaker, is invoked at the moment, and it does touch on Maori land, then an application needs to be made to the Maori Land Court. Others who will have a much more and deeper insight into the Act may be able to speak to that, but there's already a process uh, in play here, and that in and of itself is relatively um, important. So I can't support this bill um, in any shape or form. I don't think it has a place uh, in modern-day New Zealand. I don't think it has a place in mature discussions. And it, particularly, and I want to stress again, I don't think it has a place to have a mature discussion which allows us to confront the past, to confront the injustices of the past. This, in a sense, retrenches some of those mindsets or behaviours. And I don't personally believe that is the way forward. And I wanted to reiterate, we have a mature process at the moment. In fact, we were trying to do it, dare I say it, come this Friday, where through treaty settlements, through robust discussion and debate, we do look back at the falsities uh, done under the name of the Crown. We do look at the falsities done under the Public Works Act. This bill in and of itself does not address that. I personally see it as particularly um, harmful ultimately to that uh, dynamic. And I think really importantly too, it's to understand what the Act in the past was used for, that being the Public Work Act, to what it is for now. In fact, uh, the previous speaker, Kelvin Davis, noted uh, schools. And yet he noted that once it's acquired, it's not handed back uh, to people by and large, unless that's, of course, part of a treaty settlement. In fact, I'm thinking of a, a piece of land in my own electorate in Glennons that I'm pretty sure was acquired under the Public Works Act, but under a treaty settlement. It was a school. It was a school. Um, but under uh, the treaty settlement, I think it's one of those rights of first refusal, has, has been put in operation. So, again, I don't think this is a mature approach uh, to the Public Works Act. And I just reiterate again that 
relitigating the past by trying to adopt a piece of legislation for the future is not a, not a useful way uh, forward uh, for this country. So thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to speak on behalf of New Zealand for